Welcome back, everyone. Our first guest tonight is a very talented actor you know from movies like Split, Atonement, and the X-Men franchise, as well as shows like His Dark Materials. He stars in Speak No Evil, which is in theaters September 13th. Let's take a look. No! Hey! Hey, Mr. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. It's all right, boy. It's all right, you can still do it on your own. Five, six, seven, eight, come on. Hey, turn it off, turn it off! Is there a problem? Christ, Patty, he's a child. What is wrong with you? Why are you talking to him like that? Ah, now you're parenting our child. Because we do things differently. Wow. Oh, <laughs> this is not about doing things differently. This is about doing what is right, OK? I mean, you, you, you should be offering your son some love while he's crying, oh, not God, shouting Patty, at him. he's just a kid. Just let him dance. That was not dancing. And go to your room, God, I Patty. can't listen to the way you talk. Go to your room! Please welcome back to the show our friend James McAvoy, everybody! <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> lovely, right? We're happy to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, like, like, <laughs> like three people stood up, and I went like this, and then everybody went, "Oh, <laughs> okay." So, thank you very much, guys. That was very kind. <laughs> Oh. It's lovely to have you back. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I feel like uh, you've maybe gone day drinking once or twice. Mm, once or twice, teen? Yeah. Yes. I feel like, I, I mean, I enjoy it. You enjoy it? I, 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 I would suggest I might. What's yes. your ideal day drinking setup? Ooh, uh, maybe darts or pool. Uh, do you see my mime skills there? <laughs> Um, uh, darts, pool, uh, maybe some food, and then maybe daytime disco. Wait, daytime disco, that yeah. is not, uh, 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 that feels very foreign to me. No, I think it feels quite American, actually. Really? Yeah, they definitely do that in Manhattan, right? Anybody been daytime drinking, daytime disco? You guys I mean, daytime I disco? I like daytime darts and daytime pool. See, I, well, you're not the only one. <laughs> yeah, afternoon delight. <laughs> um, it feels all right. I uh, think daytime disco, might have another name. What is it like? Daytime clubbing or something like that. Okay. But like you basically go get it done in Germany. They do it. They do it really good at Bergen, this big, huge nightclub that runs for like 500 days, um, and it feels like that with the amount of drugs that people are taking. I think. <laughs> but um, they go early on like a Saturday, and then they like. And by early, I mean like they go at 11 a.m. or 12 p.m. and they go the whole night, and they maybe finish at two in the morning on Sunday morning. And then they get up at a reasonable hour on Sunday and they have brunch at like two or three and then they go to work on Monday and everything's fine. It's, it's pretty good. So the Germans have figured this out. The, they're really efficient. <laughs> they're still really efficient. I, they, I might be going on a left turn here, right? Do you straighten your hair? No. <laughs> you don't. It just naturally does this. I feel like if I straightened my hair, we'd have the exact same hair. <laughs> <laughs> can, we, can we just look out to the team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. What do you think? Fearlessly agreeing. Ask, uh, ask again, and I'm gonna lie, but I want to see what your give me your true reaction if my answer had been this. Ask my true again. reaction. I if don't, think, it, I don't I... think it's going to be a remarkable reaction. No, just ask me if I straighten. Hey, can I ask something? Yeah. Do you straighten your hair every day, two hours? Really? <laughs> and I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it too. Thank you. I think, and I think I might have to try. <laughs> okay. See, my my reaction is really not that interesting. <laughs> It's just, but I think it's wonderful. Thank and you. I think we're two men fearlessly graying. Oh, fearlessly. <laughs> fearlessly graying. You can't. You, just, just, what are you gonna do? Just bring the consequences. <laughs> bring it. I will live. I will, I've lived a life. This you is have. just showing you I've lived a life. Every line is a story, my friend. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'll, I'll pick one out for you. <laughs> <laughs> you can take it home as a memory. Um, I read a, a, you did a fascinating interview or in The Guardian where you said something that I want to ask you about. You said you'd rather be in a good play than a good movie, but you'd rather be in a bad movie than a bad play. Yes. Okay, so can you, can you break that down for us? Okay, so if I come out here, right, and say I just get really serious and I suck, and I just talk about how important acting is, and you guys are all like, oh my god, I can... <laughs> I can feel that from you, like, and then some of you might start to say the word boo, <laughs> but yeah, like, you'll elongate the vowels of that word, so that it goes like this, it goes boo, right? That's what happens when you're in a bad play. When you're in a bad film, you get paid way more, 
right? Yeah. The audience aren't there, and by the time the movie comes out, it's a year and a half down the line, and you can forget that it ever happened. You moved on. So I would much rather be in a bad movie than a bad place. I also have a question. How, uh, how early... Uh, I would imagine you know a lot quicker you're in a bad play than you're in a bad movie. Yes. However, the rehearsal period of a bad, of a, the rehearsal period of any play, I feel like is in the balance the whole time. And you think it could be great, and you think it could be bad, right until you put it in front of an audience, and you kind of go like, "Oh, this is good," or "Oh, this is bad. <laughs> this is very bad. I should have taken the movie." Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, it's What's harder. the longest, uh, uh, you know, obviously I'm not asking you to be specific, but like, was the longest bad play you were in a matter of, of weeks, months? Uh, months. Yeah. Months. Three months I toured, I, I won't name it. I, <laughs> I toured uh, many of the cities of Scotland and some of the islands, and uh, it, it, it was really bad. And... Um, <laughs> I, listen, people were really good in it. We had a great cast, and it just, it just was a strange... It was a strange thing. And uh, I got lots of no notices or bad notices, and then I remember, because it was still important to me at this time, I was very young at the time, uh, I got one good notice, and it was in a paper that I really cared about as well. It was called The Stage, so it was like the theatrical newspaper. And um, they picked me out as having given a good performance. And they got my name completely wrong. And they, <laughs> they, when I finally got picked out as giving a good performance, they called me George Drennan, who was another actor who was in the show. I'm so glad that was another actor in the show, as opposed to the worst misspelling of James <laughs> McAvoy. Yeah, no, it's, it's just how we pronounce it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this, uh, uh, this movie's fantastic. Thank you. Um, speak no evil. You're very intimidating in this film. Thank you. And it's hard, it's hard, it's a hard yeah. thing to do. But you're, uh, well, you're not a very... Uh, you're so lovely in person, and you are uh, both intimidating uh, psychologically and physically in this film. Do you mm. like the idea of taking on a, a sort of a, a devilish character like this because of those challenges? Do you know what? Like, playing a bad guy, no. Playing devilish. That's quite, yeah. that's quite exciting. Um, playing a, if it was just playing a person who is malevolent and awful and evil, probably not. But in this movie, you get to scare people and entertain people at the same time. He's kind of a fun character to watch and spend time with as an audience, but at the same time, he's really upsetting to be around. And that's like a strange tightrope to walk. And so I knew that would be hard work, but quite satisfying work if we got it right. And I think we got it right. There's, you know, I don't want to give anything away, but, you know, it is about a family that goes and, and visits another family at a farmhouse. And one of the wonderful things about the character being devilish is your charm, your character's charm yeah. is one of the reasons this family makes this crazy decision to go yeah. and basically spend a, a week with uh, people they just met. Um, but it's only believable if you have that charm to it. So that's a really good cool so. part of it. I guess so. I think so, yeah. It's a real tightrope, the whole film, and it's sort of... It's, it's really upsetting, and it's really scary, and it's really horrific, and it's really funny and really entertaining all at the same time. It's a strange mix, but it, it, I'm really proud of it. Well, it's fantastic. Thank I have a lot you. more to ask you. We'll be right back with James after this. <laughs> 